Hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show. In this video, we'll look at NMN and its link with fertility, an alternative to arts. So pretty much this video will focus on this recent Cell Reports paper, that is NAD plus repletion rescues female fertility during reproductive aging. And so this was a really interesting paper that came out only a couple of weeks ago. And it was a huge collaboration with lots of different labs, um, some of which I've named here, but honestly, I've topped and tailed the list of authors. Um, a lot of work went into this study. And so I'll pretty much discuss some of the main findings from this paper in this video. But before jumping straight into the paper, there's quite a few terminology we need to get our heads around first. So the first of which is arts. And so ART stands for Assisted Reproductive Technologies. And so these are technologies that are currently used for people who suffer with infertility to enable them to have children. And so the, the problem with these technologies such as in vitro fertilization is that they are quite limiting and they have health concerns related to them as well. So also they're very expensive, um, they're very invasive technologies. And as I said, there could be associated health risks and there's also limited success rates. And given that it's quite expensive, you can see, you know, the costs really increasing. But, you know, why, why is there reproductive decline in the first place? Why do people need to use these assisted reproductive technologies? Well, in female mammals, reproductive aging is an irreversible process. And the main reason for this is considered to be due to a decline in oocytes quality that occurs as you age and this is therefore rate limiting for human fertility. So before I go any further, what actually is an oocyte? Well, an oocyte is, the simple way to think about it is an immature egg. So if I draw out an oocyte here, we can see that it, it looks like pretty much like a cell. It's got a nucleus, um, it's got a cytoplasm, it's got a plasma membrane, and it's surrounded by what is referred to as the corona radiata. Don't worry, too much about what that is and what happens is these oocytes they do mature and they mature into eggs and then the egg gets fertilized by sperm and yeah, yeah you know what happens you get uh, a cygote and then an early embryo and so the quality of these oocytes decline as you age in females so well why do they they age why does the quality decrease well if you notice a lot of the phenotypes you can see that they're associated with the different hallmarks of aging so Older oocytes show genomic instability, reduced mitochondrial bioenergetics, and also they show compromised cell division, which is really important for early embryonic development. But one of the main reasons why oocytes are so susceptible to aging is that the oocytes are deposited in the ovary during in utero development. So at a very early stage of life, right? And they aren't replenished by a self-populating population of cells, stem cells basically, like you get in skin. So once you've got this finite population of oocytes, you know, that's pretty much it. They're there until they're used. Or at least that's what we currently think about uh, oocyte development. And so maybe it's not that surprising then that as oocytes are susceptible to the aging process and we need to have division in this early stage of embryonic development, that there is infertility associated with older and aged oocytes. And you really need a good starting oocyte for embryonic development since it is the building block for the rest of the embryo. And processes like in vitro fertilization, they don't actually improve the egg quality, they just try and enhance the fertilization process. So how can you enhance the quality of oocytes? Well, that's what this study kind of looks at. And the area they focus on is the cofactor, NAD, which stands for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. I have a video where I go into more detail about NAD, but it is a cofactor and is one of the most abundant molecules in the human body. And there are kind of two main functions of NAD plus that can be categorized into its role as a redox cofactor and also as a substrate for NAD plus consuming enzymes. And these include proteins such as sirtuins or sirtuins. I'm still not really sure what the correct way to say that is. So why did the authors decide to look at NAD plus levels? Well, firstly, NAD plus levels are known to decline as we age. And as I mentioned, NAD plus is a redox cofactor and is involved in energy and metabolism and 
oocytes and fertility and fertilization is an energetically demanding process with a lot of rapid growth. So you can see the connection between the two. And so what they did was they firstly, they, they measured the levels of NADH, which is the reduced form of NAD+, because NAD+, is really hard to measure accurately. Um, and also the phosphorylated form of NAD, which is NADPH. And they did this um, from extracted mature oocytes. And they did this in young mice, so around four to five weeks old, old mice, around 12 months, and then older mice that had been treated with NMN for four weeks. So NMN is nicotinamide mononucleotide, and it's a precursor for NAD+. And so I've spoken about NMN a lot before, but just to, to refresh, NMN is converted into NAD+. And so the rationale for the female mice taking NMN is to enhance the NAD plus levels to prevent the age-associated decline in the NAD uh, levels. So if we take a look at some of the results from the study, we can see that when the older female mice were given NMN, you could see that the decline in NAD pH levels and NAD levels was actually reduced. So you can see it kind of matches the levels seen in the young mice. But does this actually make a difference to the oocyte quality? And so this is the next thing that the paper goes on to. And so they assessed the breeding performance of the older mice who had been taking NMN by looking at the pregnancy, the number of live births, the litter size, and also the spindle assembly, which is the structure of the spindles and the chromosome alignment, which is a critical process in cell division. So if you're not aware, spindles are the kind of like fibery things that attach to the chromosomes that look like this, if you've seen images of cells dividing. So does NMN enhance the oocyte quality? So let's take a look at some of their data. So what we can see in these figures here is that taking NMN um, increased the number of live births and also the number of pups um, in the litter as well. And interestingly, you can see that 0.5 grams per litre of NMN enhanced oocyte quality, but it also enhanced the oocyte quality more than taking 2 grams per litre in the mice, which was a really interesting finding, that the higher dose actually wasn't as good as the lower dose of NMN. And so NMN has a breakdown product, which is nicotinamide, NAM. And so nicotinamide is thought to inhibit sirtuins. So that is one explanation the authors gave for why it was less effective than the lower dose. But I think the, the key point which the, the authors do enforce is that, you know, this is really new and exciting research but at the moment taking supplements such as NMN to enhance your NAD levels shouldn't be taken by women wishing to become pregnant until there have been further studies done to test this in humans. You know at the moment this has just been done in mice and the mechanism behind it isn't fully understood yet. So to recap what we've discussed so far, we've seen that this paper has shown that declining levels of NADH is associated with oocyte dysfunction during reproductive ageing, and that this oocyte quality and fertility could be restored when the older mice were treated with NMN. And what they also go on to show in this paper is that if you also supplement the embryo media, so this is post fertilization with NMN, it's also improved the development of the early embryos. And so this could be a kind of non-invasive strategy to enhance IVF. But again, this is something that has been done in mice and shouldn't, you know, it needs to go through clinical trials and tested in humans before anyone considers taking NMN as a supplement for this purpose. And the last thing they try to look more into the mechanism behind why NMN could enhance the oocyte quality and so they show that SIR2, a SIR2 overexpression, mimics some of the benefits of taking NMN, but they, they think it's unlikely to mediate the full effects. So the precise mechanism through which increased NADH levels increase the fitness of the oocytes is not entirely clear yet. However, based on the research, the group generally thinks that it could be related to the energetic role of NAD+. 
However, one aspect that wasn't discussed in the paper, which you know, I'm going to say that I am not an expert in any particular way, is the epigenetics. And so I actually wrote an essay on the art of genomic imprinting, the pun art being assisted reproductive technologies, where I talked all about um, how methylation and how during early embryonic development, there's a whole change and modifications occurring in the epigenome. And this is really important for early development. And whilst that was mainly focusing on methylation, um, NAD plus is linked with certain activity and certain are deacetylases and you have histone deacetylation and is that involved in regulating the oocyte growth and development? I don't really know. I just think it's another interesting area. And also going to David Sinclair's book, Lifespan, where he talks about his information theory of ageing and linking that to epigenetics. There could be something in ageing, epigenetics, NAD and it was like quality but who knows like I said I'm not an expert I just think this paper is really cool and you know if this could help to prevent infertility problems in a non-invasive way I think it's very exciting and yeah we'll see what happens in the future so as always thanks for listening